G'day and welcome to Mr. Craftsmith, I'm Darren and today's video we are talking all about getting into shapes. Now there's a bunch of tools in Lightburn that gives us the ability to create our own artwork and start to creating more complex shapes. So we're going to dive straight into that today and get through some of those and, and help you understand how you can get started designing your own artworks uh, quite simply and quite quickly. So let's jump straight into it. So we've got the shapes panel over here on the left hand side in our toolbar. We've got the circle, we've got the square, which is a square or rectangle, and we've got the polygon. So they're the ones that we're going to start with today. So if we just select the tool that we're wanting to use, say for example it's a circle, and if you click and drag, you can see it's creating this ellipse. If you want to create a perfect circle, all you need to do is hold down the shift key and that will create the perfect circle and you release that and you've got a circle now if we wanted to duplicate that one it's just command D or control D on a PC and that will duplicate that circle and then we can just move that across and we can hold down shift and that will actually keep it on the same plane as well I'm just going to pop that circle on another layer so we can see the two layers there and under my cuts and layers I'm going to change that to a fill so we can see them there. Okay so the first first thing that we might want to do is understand how we can cut shapes or join shapes together and there's a tool in Lightburn called the Boolean Assistant and if you select a couple of objects so we've got two objects there for the, for the Boolean Assistant, you'd need to be only selecting two shapes. It doesn't do any more than that. So it's uh, Command or Control B on the keyboard. And if we have a look at that one there, we've got these options. It brings up these option bars. Now, as we mouse over those, uh, it will tell us what the outcome is going to be. So in the case here, we've got A and B. We've got the intersection of A and B. And we've got... A minus B and we've got B minus A. So the A and the B are the objects that you're selecting. So the object that you select first, so if we do that we'll just reset that one and cancel. So if I select this object here, the green one, that's object A. And then if I hold down shift and select the other object, that's object B. Command B to bring up the uh, Boolean assistant. And let's say we wanted to make a nice sort of uh, moon crescent shape and by subtracting B from A that will give us that uh, shape there so if we click on OK now what you'll notice is that it did actually get rid of that second shape as well alright so that's just something to keep in mind when you're actually designing so that's how we do a uh, use that boolean assistant tool it's really quite simple now it's not obviously restricted to just circles you can just do any shapes it really doesn't matter it could be a shape that you're importing and let's say I'm just going to pop that one back on a green layer so we can see the difference there. And let's um, highlight those two objects. And I'm just going to center them horizontally. And I want let's, let's just say I wanted to join those together. So I, I select the two objects, Command B or Control B, and join them together. OK. So you can start to make shapes uh, really quite easily using that Boolean Assistant tool. Now, if you have more than two shapes, the, you, you, you're a little bit limited with the options. So let's just delete that one now. And let's just pull up a, um, let's just say, we'll, we'll pull up three different shapes. And we'll do a rectangle. And I'm going to chuck that on a different layer there. And let's just do a polygon as well. Now, I'll show you some stuff with the polygon in a second once we get through this example as well. So you can see we've got three different shapes there. Now, if I try and select all of those shapes and hit Command B, which I'm on a Mac, or Control B, it doesn't actually work because the Boolean Assistant is not available for multi shapes. But what you will notice over on the left hand side here is that we have a weld all shapes function. All right, so it is part of the Boolean tools, but it's the only one that's available if you have multiple shapes. So if I wanted to uh, join all those together, that will make a complex shape based on all of the objects that have been selected. 
So that's just something to remember there. Okay, so let's start making some shapes. So the first that we, first one that we're going to make is a star. Now, in order to make a star, we need to have the points of a star. Now, there's a, a number of different ways that you can go about doing this. You could start with the polygon tool. Now, if I click on that one at the moment and I hold down shift, what you'll notice is that it has uh, six sides. And you would think, okay, well, how do we actually change the type of polygon that it is? Now, the easiest way that you can do that is that you need to have the shape properties available. Now, this tab, if it's not appearing on here, all you need to do is go up to your window and make sure that you have the shape properties selected. So if we tick on that box there, that will bring up that shape properties. So now what I can actually do is adjust the number of sides that my polygon actually has. All right, so here we go. We've got a um, triangle, which is, if we start to, to, to think about that, that looks like a, the point of a star. So that's the basis of our star in this instance. So I'm just going to run with that one for the time being. Now, I'm just going to move this one around. So if I hold down Shift, what it will actually do is it will move it in 15 degree increments so as you can actually get it nice and level. Okay, so, and depending on the type of star that you're wanting to make, you might want to have a pointy star. So let's say that's going to be the point of our star. Okay, so we've got that one there. So how do we actually make the star? So there's another tool within Lightburn called the Circular Array tool. And that's this little object around here. Um, so what we actually need to do, I need to create a circle. So if I create a circle and hold down shift, okay, so I'm going to pop that onto a different color, just so as we can see that there. Now, what I can do is go back to my select tool. Now, you can see here, if I start to move that around, it's just free forming and, and moving it around. If I wanted to snap the center of this circle to the line here of the triangle, what I'd need to do is just select this center object here. So you can see that center square, and it changes from an arrow to an all sort of four arrows. If I click and drag on that now, what that will do, it will actually snap to that line. And in this case, it will also snap to the center, all right, of the um, triangle. Okay, so we've got our center circle here, and we've got our point of our star. So how do we actually create those additional points? So the first thing we need to do is select the object that we want to replicate, which in this case will be the triangle. And then I hold down my shift and select the circle because that's the center point around which I want to create these uh, replications of this triangle. So I just click on my circular array tool over here. Whoa, okay. So we've got here I'm just going to change that back down. You can adjust the copies here, and you can see as we adjust those copies, that will give us the um, the number of points to that star that we actually want. So here we're starting at two, and you can see that it, it just it uh, mathematically works it out for you, so you don't have to worry about any of those sorts of things. So let's say we wanted a five-pointed star. There we have this perfect five-pointed star. Click on OK. And I can just move that out of the way at the moment. So we look at this and go, okay, well, how do we actually, if we wanted to join that all together, okay, we can uh, weld all shapes and that will just weld them all together. And all of a sudden we have this perfect five-pointed star. And let's say we wanted to have a 12-pointed star. Same thing. We just select the base object on which we want to replicate. We then select the circle around which we want to create those replications and brings up the circular array tool and just increase the number of copies. So now we have a 12-pointed star. Click OK. And then you can just select all of those objects if you like and weld together. And there you have a 12-pointed star. So that's a nice, easy way to start to create uh, shapes that you can actually then use in your designs. Now, let's say we wanted this, okay, we wanted to keep that as a 12-pointed star, and uh, we want to pop that into our own art libraries. 
So these are all the art libraries that you're seeing over here on the right hand side. If you don't see that, you can obviously just click on the under the window and select art library and that will actually bring them up. So here you can create your own uh, separate art libraries for all the different things that you do. So whether it be um, you know, doing material tests or monograms, all those sorts of things, some slate coaster templates that I've set up there so that makes it easy for me to just to drag those in. Um, all sorts of things, so Christmas decorations, uh, whatever, whatever the case may be. So let's just say, for example, we, we wanted to create one that was called uh, Geometric Shapes. So on the Art Library, I just select down the new down the bottom here. You select where you actually want to save that one. And um, let's just say, for example, I'll just save it in my documents for the time being. So I've already got a light burn folder here. So then I would just save that as Geometric Helps if I can spell shapes and save that one. And you can now see that that's added that library to there. So how do I actually get my artwork into that library? And I've selected my artwork and I can import graphic from project and you can call it whatever you want. 12 point star. Okay. So now if I delete that one, I've now already got that one saved into my library and I can just double click and that will bring it up onto the canvas for you. So you can start to create your own art libraries and uh, all the different shapes that you might be using on a regular basis with your designs. Now the, certainly there are options where um, you know it makes sense to buy the designs but uh, I also think it's a very valuable tool to understand how to use the software that you're using so that if you do get into a situation where you do want to modify designs that you um, purchased online you'll know exactly how you can do that so uh, hopefully that's helped you out today and if you've got any questions or anything like that pop them in the comments and I'll do my very best to answer them but until the next video be creative and stay grateful bye for now